Hello friends. Today we are going to understand few definitions related to impurities. And the reference guideline is ICH Q3A. So let's start. Okay. So what is an impurity? Impurity is any component which is not a drug substance. Any component which is not a drug substance. So for example, you have paracetamol. In paracetamol, whatever is there which is not, a, not paracetamol, that those substances would be called as impurities. We will see with the help of chromatograph. Yes. So you can see over here prelocan HPLC chromatogram and the main peak is of prelocan and it has other peaks which are nothing but impurities. Okay. So you have well resolved peaks of impurities and there are six impurities in prelocan. Okay. Now, next term is structural characterization. How will you confirm the structure? You have an impurity, like R&D synthesizes impurity. And what they do? Analytical people will check the structure, confirm the structure with the help of IR, NMR. So, you have proton NMR, carbon NMR, then mass, elemental analysis, and UV spectroscopy. So, you have these and some more techno techniques also one can use. But as a minimum, people use these techniques to confirm the structure of impurity or even an API as well. Now, the next term is identified impurity. Identified. That means you know the structure. You have achieved the structural characterization and you are able to draw the structure. You know the name. And you also know the relative retention time. Naturally, that means. Because it is, you have the standard of the impurity. When you um, inject it, the peak comes at specific retention time. And the retention time of impurity, when you divide it by retention time of AP epic, you will get a relative retention time. And it would be fixed. There would be a slight variation, not much. Then, so what is understood here that when you say identified impurities, you know the structure. And these impurities, if you see the monographs, these impurities are coded like A, B, C, D and so on. Or even trilocan we have seen. The reason is, instead of writing big chemical name uh, in the chromatogram itself or in the specification itself, uh, it is recommended to have coding of impurities. And the uh, detailed name uh, would be available in the procedure. When you have a specification along with procedure, the procedure covers the detailed name, chemical name of every impurity. Okay. Now, another example, you have isoniazid drug substance, which is uh, an anti-TB drug. This is a structure. And identified impurities in isoniazid are isonicotinamide, isonicotinic acid and nicotinoyl hydroxide. Okay. So, these are different than isoniazid. These are different than isoniazid. Therefore, these are impurities. And because you know the structure, they are identified impurities. Yes. Now, one more picture or chromatogram with which we can further see how they are result in the HPLC chromatogram. Okay. So, you have A, D and B. Three peaks are there and they are coded. You have main peak of API that is isoniazid. So, this A means isonicotinamide, uh, sorry, isonicotinic acid. Impurity D is nicotinoyl hydroxide and isonicotinamide is impurity P. So, these are 
identified impurities and you know the relative retention time of each impurity. Here it is 0 0.5, here it is 1.15 and 1.4. So these are relative retention time and they get eluted at similar retention, uh, relative retention time. Yes. We'll move ahead. The next term is unidentified impurities. It is acronym of identified. Here you are not able to achieve the structural characterization. You don't know the structure. You don't know the chemical name. So what is known here? Relative retention time is known. So this impurity gets eluted at specific relative retention time. So it is specific with respect to relative retention time. But it is unidentified because you don't know the structure. As simple as that. Okay. Now if you check the HPLC chromatograph of several batches of API, then if you see that particular impurity is coming at same relative retention time. So this is that impurity which gets eluted at same retain, relative retention time uh, in different batches. Okay. So what is known? RRT is known. And then you can report it as unidentified impurity at RRT so and so. Okay. So this is the way it is reported. Reported as unidentified impurity. Then you may get this impurity, you may not get this. That's fine. If you get, you can report it. Yes. Next. Okay. So you have <clears throat> next, uh, I mean, this is the uh, better understanding. So we have picture. Now you can see batch 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you can see this particular impurity, which is getting el eluted at different retention times, but with respect to main API peak, the relative retention time is same. 0 0.89, 0 0.89, 0 0.89, same. So for all the four batches, you have unidentified impurity, which is getting eluted at relative retention time 0 0.89. Okay, so this is called as unidentified impurity where structure is unknown. Yes, the next one, right. Specified impurity. Okay. Now, specified means specific with respect to structure or relative retention time. Now, what we know? When you know the structure, it is identified. When you know the relative retention time, it is unidentified. Right? It is unidentified. Now, specified is a prefix which is added before identified or unidentified. Because it is specific. Both the impurities are specific. And how are you reporting it as? Specified identified or specified unidentified as suggested by ICH Q3A. Specified identified, specified unidentified. Okay. Next term. Unspecified. Chronium. Of specified. So here, unspecified. Nothing is specific. You don't know the structure, you don't know the relative retention time. Yes. So all unknown impurities are not individually listed. If you get several impurities in one chromatogram, several unknown impurities, so you are not reporting each and every unknown impurity. So what you do? You have to select the impurity which has highest peak area among all unknowns. So you have several unknowns. You select the one which has highest peak area and report it as unspecified impurity. Okay. Uh, so this is unspecified. Any other unspecified impurity? <clears throat> yes. Uh, some companies call it as single largest unknown impurity. Single largest unknown impurity. Yes. And the limit would be, of course, as per ICHQ3 uh, guideline. And this limit is assigned to that one impurity which has highest peak area. Okay. Yes. And other impurities would be less than that naturally. Next. Now look at the picture. So you have unknown impurity here. One. This is second. And this is third. So three unknown impurities are there. Among these three impurities, what are we doing? We are selecting the one which has highest peak area. Right. And reporting this impurity as unspecified impurity in isoniazid. Okay. Yes. I will go to next 
is how are we reporting organic impurities in isoniazide specification? Whatever we have understood, we are summarizing it here in the form of specification. So we learn identified impurities, right? So specified identified, okay, the term used here for impurity is related substances. The method is HPLC. Now related substances term is as per European pharmacopoeia, okay, and USP uses term organic impurities. So make a note of this. If it is USP, then organic impurities. If it is EP, then it is related substances. Okay, so you have impurity A, P and D. The limits are also uh, given here as per ICHQ3A guideline. Then specified identified impurity at RRT, Z, sorry, specified unidentified impurity at relative retention time 0 0.89 and the limit is not more than 0 0.10. Uh, we will see later that how these limits are assigned. Okay, then we have any other unspecified impurity. Okay. It is again same because structure is unknown. You don't know what is that impurity. So limits are as per safety 0 0.10. And then total impurities 0.5%. Total of or sum of unidentified and identified impurities. Unidentified and unidentified impurities. That is total. So you understood how identified, unidentified, unspecified and total impurities are reported. Okay. Um, we will also um, continue this series with a um, few more definitions. Yes. Uh, I'm talking on behalf of Institute of Pharmaceutical Management and it is providing various courses. You can log in to ipmindia.in or ipmindia.net or you can reach us through these phone numbers, mobile numbers, or alternatively, we have Gmail address here. Okay. So, uh, see our websites and be in touch with us for more information. Okay. You can follow us on various social media and uh, you will get updated uh, whatever is happening in the regulatory world. Okay. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks.